All right, so welcome to the world of the SCCA. Uh, it's good to have you uh, with me here tonight. Um, let me get my next uh, screen share going. So um, tonight, what we're going to do is just do a little driver orientation. And my goal with it is for you folks to uh, that are there are students at this year's 2021 driver school to take away a, maybe a little bit of your anxiety, make you feel like you've already been there for those of you who have not been to Thunder Hill Park before, um, and hopefully answer any questions you might have. Uh, we're just a few days away from the school and uh, we're excited to have you there and uh, we're really uh, looking forward to it. So with that, let me get my next screen share started. And when you're, when you're doing a Zoom, you end up with I don't know, 30 different things on your screen at the same time. So I'm constantly having to do some housekeeping to get the right screen going. So here we go. All right. Excellent. Um, so I got a little presentation here. Uh, yep. This says orientation session. Uh, so this is what we're going to jump into. And the idea is that it will help keep me on track to help uh, to help you guys. Now, first of all, I haven't introduced myself. I'm uh, I'm Ben French. Uh, I'm I'm honored to be one of the uh, uh, group leaders this year for Group Two, and I know we probably have some folks from a variety of, of the different groups with us tonight, um, and so that's that's fantastic. This session, of course, is not a mandatory thing. It's just really something I wanted to do, like I said, to lower your anxiety levels. And this year with COVID and some of the modifications we we had to do to to make our event safe. Uh, we, we got rid of our, our first big meeting that we usually do in the morning of the school. So this can kind of take the place of that a little bit. Um, so with that, let's, um, let's jump into it. Let me just make sure that my screen share is looking how I want it to look. There we go. Okay. And um, we'll get rolling. Okay. Um, so what are we going to do here tonight? Uh, we're going to talk about the steps you need for success so that you're successful in the school and get your competition permit. Um, we're gonna outline some, some driving techniques for corners. And of course your, your instructors at the school will obviously expand on this in greater detail and your coaches will as well. But we're here, here to give you just a, a basis of that. We're gonna do a virtual uh, lap around the Thunder Hill school track, which is different. Like if you've, if you've done a, uh, HPDE event, right? With with any of the clubs, you know, you you've maybe you've driven around Thunder Hill Park, but the school tracks a little different. So we're going to go into that. We're going to review the flags, and of course, I know uh, most everybody who's logged on here has probably already done the online ground school, so you guys should be able to nail those out for me. Um, and then just kind of cover some final preparations for the school. A couple slides. If, uh, if folks are bringing their own car to the school versus renting a car. I remember when I went through school, I was bringing my own car and there's there's a lot of extra stresses involved with that. And so I had a couple uh, just reminders and stuff. So with that, let's, let's jump into this thing right off the bat with steps for success at the school. Um, you're gonna have a variety of, you know, short class sessions after each one of your on-track sessions. Um, that you're going to be expected to attend, okay? And then, of course, you guys have already been working on this, I'm sure, but there's there's paperwork you had to do to get your competition permit. Hopefully, that permit's been been mailed back to you and you have it in your possession, and you'll end up giving it to us at, um, at the school so we can fill it out and you can get that, that credit. So completing your paperwork, just like everything in life, super important, right? Of course, you're going to be expected to work with instructors and, and all of our SCCA officials. But here's the, here's the, you know, the biggies as far as when it comes to your on, um, on track uh, performance is that, you know, we're gonna look for you to have clean, consistent driving. We, we don't expect you to be setting world records or anything. It's more about obeying the flags, right? So you have good awareness of what's going on. You're obeying the flags because that's their, their communication with you guys in the cars and you know, driving consistently and cleanly and, and in a safe manner where you're not gonna be um, a danger to the other folks that you're racing with on the track. And of course, uh, like all of our 
um, events and positions, we want you guys to have uh, sportsmanship uh, conduct, right? We want you to, to be well behaved. We're, we're all in this together. It's amateur racing. Um, and so that's one of the things we, we constantly strive for. So let me clear out those drawings and we'll just keep, keep on going here. Um, so one thing I, I want to get out of the way, not just scary or anything, but this is a real racing school, right? So that means it, rather than, um, you know, uh, HPDE events, you know, where it's, it's much more controlled, we're going to be going wheel to wheel. And so, you know, that, uh, that can lead to uh, dangerous situations, especially if folks don't pay attention to the flags and, and don't um, work on their track awareness. Um, you know, I have a, um, a funny thing here. Uh, it, you know, it's a kind of a famous saying within our, within our ranks, you know, that, that, um, you know, racing is, is, is more addictive and, and you're worse off than, than having maybe an alcohol addiction or something like that, because there's, there's no support groups for this thing, right? Our support groups, we're just going to encourage you to do it more. So, um, but it, th this really is, it's, it's a great sport. Um, yes, I do think that all of us folks who are in it, and, and that would probably include you guys, you've signed up for a racing school. We're all a little bit crazy, right, for doing this. Um, but uh, boy, it's, it, it sure is a lot of fun. It sure is rewarding. You can make a lot of great friendships and uh, it's, it's just a gas. So, all right. So that's, that's my, my warning. And you'll, you'll see, you know, other warnings again as we kind of go through stuff. Um, if you've ever had the opportunity to watch some folks who are, are really racing and driving at a, at a high level and you really pay attention to what they're doing, boy, it's, it's just beautiful. I mean, one of the things that I enjoy about racing at the amateur level is, is you, you learn like what even the, you know, the professionals are going through and, and, and it gives you greater appreciation of the skill those folks have. Okay. So when, when you put it all together, it just feels awesome. And it really is just like art, right? But just like if you were trying to be an artist, we all have to start somewhere. And that's that's where we're going with this um, this starting point here. So let me get that. So when I was uh, growing up, this guy, he was, he to me, he was a super great artist, right? He was making trees out of, out of nothing, happy little trees. And, uh, you know, maybe this is what we're striving for is to be able to function at this level, but we all have to start somewhere. And so this is where a lot of us are starting out. And that's, that's fine. That, right. Paint by numbers. Well, I'm going to make this square red and this one blue. And it says to do this one there. Well, for, for performance driving and, and racing, right. Our, our paint by numbers, so to speak, is the reference points that we pick out on the track, okay? And then later on, we start connecting those together, and that is what we use to form our driving line. So let me clear those scribbles out of there, and we'll see what I mean. So I've taken, you know, I, I'm an avid um, student, if you will. I'm a, I'm a college instructor, and one thing you, you realize from uh, – teaching is like, if you really want to know something well, teach it to somebody else, right? But it also, you know, being an instructor, sometimes I feel like it makes me a great student and other times it might make me a kind of an honorary student. But, you know, depending on, you know, whose training you go to, you'll see a couple different um, methods to break down corners, right? A lot of times we'll break down corners into zones, right? So they'll talk about four zones to a corner where you have your braking zone here, which is number one, followed by your, your entry and your mid corner region, and then ultimately your ex exit, right? But within those four zones, a lot of folks like uh, the guys at Racers 360, they have a, a thing that they like, they talk about the five points to every corner. And I, I've kind of modified their terms to make it work for my style, but you know, this is what we're doing as far as connecting the dots, right? Um, we're looking for these points. And the best way to really go about doing this, let's say you were learning a new track. And I know for some of you folks, that might be exactly where you're at. You're, you're having to piece together a new track here at, at Thunder Hill this weekend, um, is to start 
at the exit, start at the end and start working your way backwards. Okay, if that's where I wanna be an exit, where does my apex or my center of the corner, my clipping point wanna be? And then, okay, well, where do I wanna get off of the brakes? I find that to be very helpful. And it was something that really, uh, you know, I, I drove on the track for a long time and I would focus a lot on where I begin my braking, right? Like getting on the binders, I'm going to get on the, on the brakes at the, at the three board or the two board, right? But more critical than that is really think, well, where do I want to be off of the brakes? And then I can kind of work my way backwards from there, right? So I want to be off of the brakes. I want to have a reference for that. And then where am I committing my turn into the corner and then ultimately backing up to, okay, this is where I need to begin my braking so that I'm slowed down to the point where I can proceed with my turn in and then hit my, hit my apex, hit that, that clipping point to the corner. So um, like I said, your, your instructors this weekend will expand on this more, but you know, and some of you folks are likely, you know, you've maybe done lots of track days, maybe erased goat carts or all kinds of other things. We really have a, a fantastic mixed group um, but, uh, you know, for those of you, maybe this is new and, and you really are kind of starting out at that, let me, let me connect the dots. This is a, a great way to, to break these corners down into different segments. So five points, five reference points to every corner, start at where we want to be on our exit and we start working our way back from there. All right. So with that. Um, you know, it, it does relate, you'll, you'll hear this from your coaches and instructors throughout the weekend. Uh, I find we say this a lot and sometimes we say it so much and then we forget that yeah, maybe, maybe our students don't know what this means. So we'll say, oh, get your eyes up, right? We want you looking farther ahead. And it's, it's a difficult thing. I'll be honest with you. Like in, in regular street driving, right, we're looking at traffic lights and that tends to pull our eyes down. Also, if you're in the, in the race car and, and for a lot of you guys, you might be in a car that's, that's new to you. You've never driven before. And, and um, you know, our human instinct tends to, you know, go into like a hyper focus as we get nervous and, and maybe get a little bit scared and stuff we tend to kind of zoom in and really we want to open up our vision and get all that good visual information and look look up so we see far enough ahead. So one of the things is, is if you're out there this weekend and you feel like, boy, stuff's really coming at me really fast, like, like your brain's on, on overload, if you will, you're likely not looking far enough ahead. So when we say eyes up, we want you looking out and really getting that good visual information. Well, to kind of give you started, because a lot of folks will say, well, look, eyes up, look ahead, like how far ahead, right? And really, the, the, the faster you're going, the, the further ahead you should look, right? Um, but to get you guys started, the one and a half rule works pretty good, okay? So if you think of those different reference zones in the corner, if we're like one and a half reference zones further ahead, you know, that's kind of a good starting place. And like I said, if, if you're trying that and you still feel like stuff is coming at you too fast, that's your sign that, hey, I, I really want to look further ahead. So even though that we're in the car and we, and we feel so much sensation from, from, our, from our body in the seat and we have uh, audio input, you know, from the noise of the wind and the engine and stuff, there's a lot of visual aspect to, to performance driving. And so um, where you're looking is a big, big deal, guys. Um, so what we have here is, of course, if, if I was in the red car here, I'd be looking, you know, one and a half spots ahead. You know, I should be looking there. And then if I happen to be in the green car, I'd be looking there. And so you can kind of see that lead that we have there. Now, is that, you know, hard, fast, like, no hard, fast rule of I'm always going to do it this one and a half times. No, like I said, you're going to hear lots of things this weekend that, you know, like it's a good general idea and you might have to modify it a little bit. Like I said, you, you might have to look further ahead, especially if you're in a vehicle that moves further down the track. And so, you know, ultimately you guys will be the ones in the cars and you'll have to 
you know, work that out for yourself. But getting your vision up and, and out and looking far ahead is, is, a, is a very important thing to do. And like I said, it's, it's almost counterintuitive to the way our brains are wired. We tend to focus in uh, tight, especially as we get nervous. All right, let me clear those drawings and we'll put this back along the lines to forming our reference points, right? So, so we're gonna start the, the weekend and uh, we're gonna do what we used to call station wagon sessions where everybody would pile in a car, we'd go around the track. This year, we're gonna have to do it a little different with COVID, we're gonna do some lead and follows. But in those sessions, one of the things you're trying to do is pick up reference points when you get it on track, of course, you're then connecting these um, reference points together, right? And so that's how we form our our driving line. So if you're if you're in in your class session and you and your instructor is you know driving the line through the corner, drawing it on the board, you know going around the track, like you see in the picture here, you're like, how did, how is that line formed? Well, you know it's Really, when you're driving the track for real, you're finding those references and you're putting those together to form your, your driving line. All right. Um, so since we're talking about the line, what we want to do, clear that out, is um, get some... Um, get some nomenclature out of the way, right? Like we talked about apex is, is this center point of the corner or clipping point, but then you'll hear, well, wait, you got a late apex, an early apex, and you might talk to some of your classmates and they'll say, oh, I'm in a front wheel drive car. I'm going to apex here. And the, you, so this apex term gets thrown out a lot. And of course, there's different variations of it, like you see here. Um, a lot of times in school, we'll default more to this later apex line. So if I look at the look at the blue line, versus the green line here, you can see that, you know, the turn is initiated a little later, okay? And it's made more dramatic, but what it has done is it's really opened up the, the exit of the corner. Like you have lots of room there on exit. So you had to slow down more in the beginning, but it's opened out, opened up that exit and, and given you essentially like a longer straightaway. It's a, it's a good line to start with is, is that, that later apex line. And it's one of these things where you, when you get in the car, a lot of times you might feel like you're driving this blue line perfectly and you're really not because your, your perception in the cockpit of the car is different than on the outside. And so you'll have to work with your coaches this weekend to, to make sure that you're doing what you're, you're actually trying to be doing. Um, I, I've had drivers at, at, at different points, even my own son who he, he swore he was he was doing a late apex line for a hairpin corner, and I I literally had to film him with the video camera and show him, nope, this is what you're doing. And he's like, oh, that's not what I thought I was doing. So, um, the green line here would be more of your middle apex, your your classic line there, where that apex point, that central point of the corner, is in the kind of the geometric middle of of that turn, right? And another thing to think about this apex is, is that's usually where we want to make that commitment to getting on the throttle, right? We want to carry our carry our speed, we get our braking done, we we get the car slowed down. And where are we getting on the throttle? We're getting on the throttle at the apex. And if you think about it, no matter which line we've we've picked here, um, the green or the blue from that apex point forward, I'm not adding more steering to the car, I'm taking steering away, okay? So you guys, you know, you'll get lots of instruction on this throughout the weekend. This is just to kind of get you uh, primed up and, and ready, to, ready to do this stuff this weekend. Um, I also wanna say that on our, um, on the email that I sent out, there's some links there to some resources that you can get from uh, Speed Secrets. And in those resources, if you take the time to go through them, uh, they do a great job of talking about these points, early apex, mid apex, late apex, the advantages, disadvantages. Um, one of my telltale signs, right? Like I said earlier, um, if you find stuff's coming at you too fast, 
you're not looking far enough ahead. You're not, you don't, your eyes aren't high enough. Well, when it comes to line, if you find that you're having a hard time, you keep dropping wheels and you're, you're over here. It's like you're, you're running at a track. That's largely you're either apexing too early. And so then you're just going off in the, in the weeds because you're, you're apexing too early or you're just trying to carry way too much speed through that corner. But we see it a lot where people tend to want to crab into the corner and, and apex too early and then they run out of room of exit. So, so if, if you find that th this is where you keep wanting to end up, you know, ask your coaches this weekend to, to watch you and, and, and give you feedback as to what you're doing. And one of the things you'll likely be, be fighting is apexing earlier than you want to. Okay, so beat you up with some, some apexes and we'll keep going. All right, so since we've been talking about all this driving line um, uh, information, we're gonna jump into a virtual track walk, if you will. Um, uh, we're gonna do a lap around Thunder Hill and in it, you know, what you'll see is, is you have an instructor car, you have student cars, and in some cases, neither car is necessarily on the perfect line but it will give us stuff to talk about. And the idea with this is, is that before you get to the track, it's almost like you've, you've already been there. You're gonna know where some stuff is at, right? Now, if you're ever going to a new track, um, you know, try to do your homework like this. Like there are programs you can buy that are virtual track walks. You can maybe drive that track on a simulator. You could watch YouTube videos of other racers. Um, be careful that sometimes if you're just looking at stuff on YouTube, their line could be radically, you know, incorrect from where maybe it should be. Um, and of course, different cars are going to have different acceleration and brake points and stuff. But the idea is that if you can kind of pick up your surroundings, you'll be that much more acclimated when you when you get there. And that's our that's our goal with this this little virtual track walk here. So we're going to look at. Uh, key corners, obviously, but we're also going to try to um, make sure that we identify our corner stations, okay? And then we're going to end up where we're just going to hammer down um, uh, some, of, some of our rules as we get started here this weekend. So, all right. Jumping right along. Okay, so... Um, Again, I, you know, you, this will likely be the, maybe the one and only time that you get to drive this particular track. Okay. This is kind of the track that Thunderhill started with, you know, uh, over um, 25 years ago um, before they increased it to a three mile course. Um, I actually, I, I, I really like this, this little track. It, it gives us a great, um, uh, grouping of, of corners and a variety uh, to put you guys in in different situations um, to to really get you get you tuned up and, and ready for for racing. So I have here this is your office for the next three days. We end up here where we essentially we have uh, nine turns and you know one big straight and a, three smaller straights and definitely have some great complex corners and some great elevation change. Um, we are really just super fortunate to have a, a facility like this uh, in our in our region. So the big change here is that, of course, we're going to not be continuing on over here. We're going to be doing this turn eight and coming back around the track right there. Okay. So I grabbed some screenshots to kind of walk us through just that. Okay, so here we are, we're, we're going down the front straight. And you can see we, we got, um, uh, we're in our in our camera car, and we have a, a, a driving student passing on the on the side there. And um, let's see what we can see here. We have, I can line this up, I'll use that color. Um, we, of course, we have our flag stand here, right? And we can see, start to see our corner stations over there. And, and um, one thing that's kind of unique here to Thunder Hill 
is, and it's hard to see on this on this particular slide, is that the flag stands up here, but the start finish line, he's much further back. And so there's been races that have been won or lost because one competitor raced up to the flag stand and the other competitor made sure that they raced to the checkered flag. So it's kind of one of the interesting things of, of the, the Thunder Hill course here. All right. So we, we're going down the front straight and we're approaching turn one here. And another interesting thing about this uh, track is we have this, this merge line, this blend line as uh, cars come out of the pits onto the racetrack. And you can use that line. We as drivers need to be looking for this traffic and make sure that we're not going to jump out over there if we have cars coming on the racetrack. And of course, if you happen to be a car that's going onto the racetrack, you need to stay on this side. Let me change that color. You need to stay on this side of that white line and ride that thing all the way out until it ends and not just get on there and move out in front of a bunch of cars. Okay. So we're, we're getting towards the end of the straightaway. We're getting ready to get into our brake zone. And even a, a car like a Spec Miata is moving at a pretty good, you know, rate of speed is going to be going uh, somewhere around a, a hundred miles an hour or so. So we're, we're definitely moving down the racetrack at this point. We're trying to look far ahead. We're identifying our um, flag stations here. So we can see a couple of stations here in the distance that we're, we're approaching and we're gonna get ready and get set up for this turn. Let me get that it's over, okay. So what we've done is, is the, the, the traffic was clear. We've moved out to that line to kind of open up the radius of this corner. And so um, one thing about Thunder Hill uh, versus some other tracks is it's, it's a challenge. You know, here I was, I was beating you up with references. Whew. Thunder Hill is a tough one for references. Um, now, this is from a, a driver's school maybe two or three years ago. Um, uh, but, you know, it's, it's, you know, early in the year and it's all green out there, right? And it goes from green to, to brown. But you know, what I'm getting to is there's not huge number boards for breaking points. Um, this is really, in my perspective, it's, it's much of a, like a depth perception track. So it's, it's a difficult one for a lot of reference points and you really got to get creative. There's not like huge billboards and different things that, that you can get there. And, and it's one of those things where again, these reference points, they kind of get us going. And then over time, we, we start putting all that stuff together in our peripheral vision. And, and we start looking, you know, this is where I want to go. And so I'm not necessarily playing connect the dots on the outside, but, um, to give you an example, right? Like several of the key corners on this track do have little white lines painted on the side. So you can see one right there. Sometimes, and it seems like sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not there. There's um, some uh, plastic stanchions that are poked in the ground. So th those are a little, little hit or miss. And of course for driver's school, there's likely to be some cones out there, but there is a danger of using cones as references and what and what's what's that danger of i'm just gonna i'm gonna use that cone there what's the danger of that the cone might not be there next time exactly exactly thank you yeah yeah somebody wipes out that cone and you were totally relying on that cone now now you're out to lunch so um yeah that's good stuff so uh, you know, we have to look for, you know, di different colorations in the pavement surface. Like I said, there's little paint lines here in uh, a lot of the key corners here. And it's very much a depth perception type track. So it's kind of like you load this image kind of in your mind of this is where I'm at right here. And, and then you're uh, reflecting on that on that image to figure out where you're at and where do you want to go. 
So as we move um, forward on this, I can do that. There we go. So we've gone from we're in in the brake zone here. We're getting getting the car slowed down, and then we start transitioning off the brakes as we turn in. And and when you look at some of these, sometimes like I said, the cars will be right on line. Sometimes sometimes the cars will be off. But you can also look at our driver's hands on the steering wheel to kind of figure out how much steering input do they have at this at this point. So we're we're on the binders, and we're just going to start. Uh, our, our turn in point just a little bit after where that car happens to be at. Okay. Okay. So we've turned into the corner here and we, we can see that inside curb. And what I like about this shot is that, uh, you know, it shows you what, what a big, you know, climb there is coming out of turn one here. You know, it, it doesn't necessarily feel that way if you're in your car. Um, if you go out and walk the track, which is always a, a great idea, a great, great thing to do to really to really learn it and pick up these references. Um, in fact, one of the things I, I like to do is if I can, I, I get there, I walk the track and I'll take photos kind of like these photos, but I'll take photos as I walk the track and and put together a picture book. Anyways, we've turned in. We're heading to the apex, and of course, now you can see there is a there is a, a cone that has been set out for us, right? So we we have that there. We don't want to just rely on that, but we can see that for this corner, oh, about two thirds of the way, you know, getting towards the end of that um, of that inside curb is our apex point, and then we're going to be traveling to the outside of the track. And when we look at these two cars, I would say in this shot, maybe our camera car. You know, he's he's apexing maybe a spinge early and then our our student car that we're following, he's, you know, pretty good, maybe slightly wide. You can use a little bit of that curb as you feel comfortable to do so. Um, but it gives you a good feel for going through that that turn. And, you know, this is really a, a pretty high speed corner. So I like to call it the hair razor because it's one of those things where, where you're doing it right. You know, your, your hairs all stand up a little bit. You're, you're right on that edge and you're really carrying a lot of speed through here that you can carry with you up with, at, you know, through the exit of this corner. It's really a, a daunting one that's a, a lot of fun when it's done correctly. Okay, so here we are on the exit. Um, we're climbing the hill again, you know, we're not necessarily perfect in this shot. Like we could, we could have definitely come out and used more of the track from the camera car. It could be that the car here was going slow enough where they didn't feel like they needed to be all the way out there, but it's a good idea to try to drive that nice line. So you kind of build up that mental programming, if you will. Um, so we're, we're cresting the hill and of course it's right behind the green X. And of course the green X I haven't explained that. That's that's going to be how you guys know you have an instructor car. Uh, so if you see a car with the green X like in front of you or behind you, we'll, we'll have a few cars uh, for every group that are uh, in the green flag sessions. But they're they're instructor cars to help you know watch what you're doing out on the course, uh, demonstrate a, a good driving line to you. So basically, just to give you some folks to, to drive around with and, and, and set a good example for you and also to be able to see what you're doing and give you give you good feedback after the after the session. So that's what that green X is about. But behind that green X, of course, is our corner station right here. Right. And so one of the things I like to do every time I, I go out on track and I'm doing my, my initial lap is I make sure I, I look at all those corner stations. Um, sometimes you're at an event and it's not so much for a race event. It's usually like if you're there for a track day or a test day, they might not have people in manning all the corner stations. There, Some of those corner stations might not be being operated. And so in that initial kind of reconnaissance lap, I'll see, okay, who what corner stations are gonna be active for this event and make sure I, I know where those at and I'm always aware of what's going on. All right, 
So moving, moving right along. So we're cresting the we're, we're cresting the hill from from one, and now we're di diving down into two. And and this is another really fun corner. This is kind of like your your circle track turn, and it's a turn that just kind of goes and goes and goes and goes. So this is this is our our sweeper here, if you will, and and there's multiple ways really to do this this corner. Okay, you can start with a wide line here, like we're going to see in these slides that starts out wide and then progressively gets tighter and tighter and tighter, and apex is about three quarters of the way through the turn. That would be kind of your classic classic line. But you know, uh, certain certain drivers and cars they. They, they can come in and just kind of diamond this thing off. So it's it's one of these turns where you really have some options. Some 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 folks like to kind of make this like a NASCAR turn where they 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 apex the um, both sides of it. Um, so you have some options. This is a great place for you this weekend to um, test out the limits of your car and, and feel like you know when it's getting to the the limits of grip because you have more room here than it looks like. And, um, you know, it's a pretty safe and controlled controlled spot to, to feel, feel the car and feel what's going on. So here we're dropping down into this thing. Um, we've had to slow the car down a little bit. I would say for a lot of cars, uh, you know, the, the tendency is to, to over slow. You, you, can, you can really uh, go in here maybe harder than, than you would think, um, you know, and depending on the car you're in, you know, it, it, it might be an advantage for you to, to do your downshift before entering this corner. Um, and then there's other cars that seem to work really good, just keep riding it in that high gear. So that's, again, stuff that as a driver, you'll have to, you know, figure out this weekend and work with your instructors and coaches and figure out with, with the car you're in, what gearing works best for you. So we're doing that kind of classic line where we're starting kind of wide, but then we're slowly getting down more and more. And what I would say here is that um, our student car that we're following just never really got down to the inside of the corner, it was always, you know, four feet, you know, wide or so of, of apex. Here we're, here we're hitting the apex. And, and here's a great example of maybe how how far off your perspective can be in the car until you get used to it. Like at this point, it looks like that this car that the, the driver's side tires over here, and they, they look like they'd be in the, in the grass here, mowing, mowing the grass, but they're, they're right, you know, on that white line there. So it, it is, it is something that you have to get acclimated to is, is how your perspective in the car, it, you know, is, is different oftentimes. So um, we're moving through, hitting our apex, and we will move out from here and come all the way out and use that exit. Let me back up. So it's hard to see from here, but there is some, you know, blue and white curbing on the outside here. And then so we're going to come all the way out and just kiss that curbing. It's it's pretty flat, it's pretty friendly. Um, we'll kiss that and guess what? Looks like we're, we're, we're going up another hill here. And so, you know, we have several blind crests on this track that really make it um, exciting. So we're approaching turn three and pretty soon after this, in fact, you can just start to see it if I clear out my Oops, if I clear out some of my drawings here, um, you're just going to start to see the turn three station, uh, uh, corner station right there. So if I clear this out of there and we get this going, we're going to cr crest over the hill. And this is one of these ones where when we get over the hill, we're going to have a little bit of a surprise. So let me throw up the track map so we can see uh, where where we're at right now. So you can't see on this map, but there's, there's a hill, we're gonna crest it. And then we drop down into three and three is an off camber corner. So the, the angle of the of the, the corner there, it's, 
it's it's working against us, right? It's not like we have a bunch of camber. It's not like Daytona where we have all this camber to help help us, you know, keep the car stuck to the track. It's working against us. So it's one of those ones where we're going to have to, you know, for most most cars that you guys will likely be in this weekend, we're going to have to get get our car slowed down some before we crest that hill. Okay? And one thing to think about all these these hills that you crest is that, you know, if the tires aren't on the ground or the tires are are light, right? Cuz the 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 weight's off because you're cresting that hill. Of course, you can't do a lot of braking and turning and stuff because you're not going to have much grip from those tires. So I always think, hey, if my tires aren't touching the ground, I, you know, I, there's no sense, you know, steering the car at that point. So I want to get stuff straight as I crest these hills and not ask for a lot of my tires when they're not in a position where they have full firm contact of the of the ground there. So that's where we're at on the map. Let's get back in the pictures. So we've crested the hill and we did our our you know, most of our braking before we crest the hill, we let the car land and then we start turning in. As far as um, our line, if I go back, seems like I'm missing a, a photo. Um, you know, there's some folks that like to get all the way over here. Um, what you'll see is for a lot of, you know, your lower uh, speed cars, you know, you could get about mid track and get it uh, set up so that it's angled over and then go straight over the hill and you end up cresting and being about mid track. If you end up where you're way out over here, you can see how gray the track is there. You don't have a lot of grip there. Um, and I know, I know there's some brave uh, souls on the line that, you know, pulled out some uh, spectacular passes out here. Um, but for us getting started, you know, you'll find that there's significantly less uh, grip out here. And so about a car width um, from the inside here, and it's hard to see in this picture, but again, there's a, there's a difference in the color of the pavement as they, as they laid that down. And so you can use that as a reference to judge your position of where you're at on the, on the course. And so if you, if you have your passenger side tires on this darker pavement, you, you, you won't end up where you're so far on the outside that you feel like you're slipping off the racetrack. And so we're gonna start pinching our way back in and we're gonna end up doing a nice late apex and getting parallel to this uh, curbing on the exit that will lead us over to turn four. some of that out of the way. So there we are, we're getting to that exit. Um, haven't quite got to that super late apex at that point. And so you can see the steering input in the car. And there we go. And so before we go into uh, turn four, so here's our, here's our turn here, um, you know, we have a, a short span of, uh, you know, essentially straight steering here. Um, so why did we set up the exit of three? So we're all the way to the outside. Well, we're, we're trying to give ourselves a nice radius coming in here through four that will set us up really nicely for turn five. And you'll be surprised how much speed, when you do this right, you can carry through this section. So there we are coming in. Again, our student car is, is really not uh, getting down all the way to, to um, this you know, mid to late apex here. Um, and so one of my sayings that I like to you know, tell myself and tell my students over and over, it's like, hey, you know, you paid for the whole track, try to use that whole track, right? Open up those radius as, as much as you can. Um, use the whole track, you certainly paid for it. And if you do that, you'll find that that will help 
improve your improve your times on the course. All right. So we're setting up, we're going through four, and now we're going to set up till five. And, and one thing I should say before I change slides here is that, you know, five, you're, you're climbing a pretty big hill. And what that means is the hill, you're going to have to slow down to do the turn that's in the middle of this hill, but the hill will kind of catch the car. It'll catch you there. And so you can brake pretty late on a lot of cars because the hill helps you get that car woed down. And so when you're driving the course, it's, it's of course not just the shape of the track, but it's also the topology of, you know, what, what's the elevation? Is it working for me, working against me? That'll affect, you know, my, my turn in points and the break points and those types of things. All right. So now there we go. We're getting up to turn five. And this is like kind of the signature turn here of our Thunder Hill um, a three mile course. They call it the cyclone. I guess you could say it's, you know, Thunder Hill's version of a, of a um, uh, of our corkscrew or something, if you will. But it's it's definitely a, a big, uh, a, a big hill. And, and you feel like when you go off it the first time, like you're going to just, you know, fall off the other edge, edge of the world, right? We can see the flag station, right? So here's our our turn five flag station there. Again, we want to try to use up this, use the whole track. So our uh, camera car here has gotten, you know, pretty parallel here to the outside edge of the track. And what we're going to do is we're going to get our turn done so that we can go essentially like straight up and over where we're not asking the tires to turn as we crest the hill. So Again, we can see that our, our student car here is still working on trying to get to where they're using the whole track there. Um, so it's a good kind of perspective between the two the two cars. So you can see, yeah, there's there's some a cone there. Uh, this is another one of those signature turns that does have some white paint markers on it. And of course the front of this car is, I, I wanna say like over the first marker, but there is some paint marks and stuff here. There's some discolorations in the asphalt and stuff for you to pick up. And you can see that there's all kinds of tracks, right? Like th this, this is a turn that people do get wrong pretty frequently and end up going for a pretty exciting ride. So part of, part of our goal, of course, by doing this walkthrough is that you know what you're getting into and hopefully will prevent you from going through a wild ride. So or we're, we've transitioned off of the brakes, we're getting ready, we're turning in and just in a minute we're going to crest over that hill and when we do, when we're cresting it, you notice that hey, the steering is straight when we crest the hill and we're going to go straight up and over here um and go down go down the hill and of course now now we can see uh again right um but before we before we crest that hill it feels like you're just you're driving off of a cliff right and it's really one of those uh turns where it takes it takes you know a couple times doing it where where you can start forming that mental picture in your head of this is what's on the other side um i know some folks that that you know they like picking uh, references off the track, like these posts and stuff. I, I don't know if that works for me, but you know, part of it, I guess, is to figure out what works for you. So, so I know some folks that they really liked looking at the polls and they could line up with that. Um, it's one of those ones where, you know, when you get the rhythm of this turn down, it, feel, it feels really good. And you can just kind of do this with, with rhythm. And, you know, throughout the weekend, I'm sure your, your coaches will talk about how as you're as you're driving, essentially, you know, you, you start forming, you know, the the mental images of where you're going and what's happening in your mind here. And so you should have a picture of your mind of, you know, what's going to be on the other side. And so it's not just what you can see. It's, it's also what you what you've seen before. So you know what to expect course you know looking at that flag station is super important right if there was a big pile up on the other side which there can be 
right? That flag station is going to be your lifeline so that you don't end up coming over that hill and plopping right in the middle of that big melee. All right, so we start going down turn five, and, and now we're technically in turn 5A, and you can really carry a lot of speed down this turn. But as, as you do that, of course, what it's going to want to do is it's going to want to push your car here to the outside of the course. And the hard thing about that is that can mess us up for our next turn that we have coming up, right? So oftentimes what you'll find in, in performance driving is, is you're, you, know, you compromise one corner to set yourself up better for the next corner. And you got to prioritize like which one's more important to me, right? Usually the ones that lead to long straightaways are the, the important turns that you really want to execute well. And that's, you know, essentially the case coming up right here. So just a couple other references to point out right here. You'll notice again that we have this change between where the pavement was laid with a darker and a lighter color. And uh, this is one of those ones where our uh, student car is probably pushing a little bit hard and they're a little wide here and they're really going to have to work hard to get back to the other side of the track here. Clear those drawings out and keep going through. All right, so where are we at on the track map at this point? We just finished up 5A and we want to get back to the outside of the track to set up for this turn six. And why is that so important? Well, it may not look like it from this map, but essentially if, if I can get a good drive out of six, even though I got this turn seven, right? So that, that turn seven is like your gentle turn. It's your turn and you, you, get, you get to breathe through there, right? Um, it's a big straightaway. And of course, if you're doing the full Thunder Hill track, then it's even more important because that straightaway goes longer, essentially. So it's the unstraight straightaway, if you will. And so this turn six is, is a pretty darn important turn to get right. And it's, it's, it's a little bit tricky. It's one of these ones where we can oftentimes apex a little bit earlier than we think. Um, we And we can really use all that room on exit. We do have to be mindful of these curbs. Um, so let's, let's take a look on the pictures here. So here we are. I have get it right, important turn. Um, so again, you got different pavement colorations here. And you notice that there is, there's your flag station there, right? And we're always spotting those. So we see some skid marks here. We have some pavement change there. This is another turn where we have some of the white paint marks on the outside that we can use as a reference. And of course you can see there is some cones, but we've already talked about how those cones can fool you if somebody mows them over. So, so we're coming in here, we're gonna woe down the car just enough. We're going to get it slowed down just enough and initiate our turn in. See if I can clear off those scribbles. There we go. And we're, we're turning into the corner. And this is one where, you know, really, again, our, our student car is probably a little, a little wide. We'll see if they, if they make it to apex or not. Uh, maybe our uh, instructor car, maybe is a little early here. Um, coming into this uh, coming into this turn um, somewhere just past the middle here is where we're going to want to apex this thing and this is one of these ones where you can notice that this curb is pretty steep here right so if I got too rowdy and got greedy and, and took a bunch of this curb it really could upset the car and the other thing to note is that the the um, the ground kind of slides away so if, if you slip off the outside edge of this thing you're usually just you know you're going out there you're, you're mowing some grass for a while it takes you takes you quite a bit to to end up easing your way back back on course but on the other hand it's really important so we're trying to carry as much speed through here as we can 
So here we are on the exit. We've come all the way out to the curbs. And of course, the, the exit curb here is flat. And if unless it's wet or something like I, I can use that, but I do have to be cautious whenever you're on curbs, right? There's a, always a point where the curb ends and you don't want that to catch you out. So um, so we're following this and we're, we're getting set up. We can see our next flag station here in the in the distance and then there's some access roads here for um uh there's some access roads here for some of our safety vehicles and uh and there'll be some vehicles on those access roads this weekend uh, i want to say they're actually going to be doing um uh, an extraction activity training for our our workers this weekend as they cut a car apart and uh you know get that training done so anyways uh so we're going to go right on through here and we're going to try to apex that turn seven and it's one of these ones where it's not uh not a terribly difficult one to do unless you know maybe if you're in an extremely fast car or something and so it gives you a chance to keep the hammer down but also catch your breath at the same time so i we changed uh uh uh, follow cars here, uh, or not follow cars, we, we change student cars here um, because uh, depending upon what time of day you're out for your session, one of your challenges will be fighting the sun shining in your eyes here. And so um, I had to switch switch some of my photos here around it to give you guys a little better view where, you, where there wasn't so much reflection that washed out that the images here. Anyway, so here's here's turn seven. And again, we're we're in this particular car, a lower horsepower car like a like a Miata. We're we're you know keeping the pedal down through here and it's essentially like a big straightaway or unstraight straightaway if you will. And we're trying to do a nice gentle arc and use the use the whole track. And so the car we're following is doing a pretty darn decent job there. And again, you know, it's remember to, to breathe when you're out there and especially if it's your car, it's, it's a pretty good idea to check those gauges check occasionally and check your mirrors. And so now we're coming into our turn, turn eight. And this, this is a great turn for the school. It's a great turn um, for, for trail breaking and just like, you know, it's, it's essentially like kind of like a 180. It's almost a 180 here and it's just a it's just a great turn um, on your races on Sunday. It'll be a kind of a, a favorite passing area for you guys. It's a lot of fun. And so sometimes I think it's kind of a shame that we only get to play with this usually on uh, on driver school. But it is a it is a fun, fun corner. So here we are. Um, we've gone through turn seven. We're, we're using all the road. We want to get right to the outside of the track without dropping our wheels off in the dirt there. And um, again, there's not a ton of references here. All right. There's not big like, you know, three, two, one. There's no, no big breaking boards here or banners or anything. But, you know, if I'm if I'm observant, if I'm crafty, I, I do see that there's some there's some cracks that have been seal coated here. Um, you know, there's might be differences between the paint on the edges or um, the the vegetation around there. So I start picking up these things for references as I get to my begin of breaking, right? The start of my my break zone. All right. So here we are. Oh, look, we have some uh, plastic stanchions here on the outside. Again, you can see some of those seal coat cra uh, cracks forming here. And we've, we're beginning our braking zone. We can see the car in front of us is braking and the car in front of him is turning, uh, is, is turned in and pretty good, pretty darn good use of the, of the track here, huh? Right on that, right on that edge. And of course, by doing that, that's gonna give us a wider radius. So we'll be able to carry more speed through that corner. So now we're, we, we're transitioning off of the brakes. And as we're transitioning off of the brakes, we're feeding in that 
feeding in that steering. And this is one, if we go back to that track map, it's one of those ones where kind of like we did with turn two, we don't really have to, you know, hit a tight apex here at the beginning. Our focus really is way out over here on the exit. So we can be a little wide and then come in and really get that nice exit for where we want to be because really the job with this eight is setting you up for nine that leads onto that big straightaway. So it's another one of those places where we compromise one to set up for the other, right? So let's see how our students and instructor car do through this section. So we're, we're turning in, we can see the, the wheel input there. We keep moving forward. So now we're at our, at our, just about at our apex there, we're gonna start taking wheel away any second. And we can see that if we go back to where we were before, it looks like our student car never really got down to an apex and always ended up um, drifting now arguably wider than they wanted. Now, why would that be a big deal? Well, because we're gonna have to get set up back over here for turn nine so that they're going to have to work harder to gather it back up and get it worked back over to the other other side of the racetrack of course we you know we saw that corner station there we can see the stanchions here that are blocking off that other part of the, the course there's also a flag station that's pretty washed out that's over in this area and that's also our entrance to pit road so um you know it could be that this this driver wants to get out to that outside because they're gonna they're gonna go down pit road for some reason. That's a possibility. Um, but I think they just ended up maybe cooking it in there a little hot, ended up a little wide. All right, so moving right along. Yep. So the big exit, right? Important corner because it's it's leading up to the straight, right? So if we get to this corner and have to slow way down, we're gonna lose all that speed and, and have to you know try to gather it back up on the straightaway. So it's so one of these things your 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 coaches and instructors will will talk to you throughout the weekend about it. But if if I can come out of this turn nine and I could carry even even just you know a half a mile an hour, one more mile an hour, I'll I'll carry that all the way down the straightaway and I'll build on that. And so that, that ends up being a really big deal that impacts your final straightaway speed by, by quite a bit. So I wanna, again, open up this radius, you know, as much as I can within reason. Um, part of your job as a driver, of course, is to learn the track. And so you can see, I, I do have pavement out here. This is, this is dark color, that's, that's pavement. You got this, this white line, that white line. Um, there's some, blue and white rumble strips here that are hard to see um you can go out over there it gets pretty it gets pretty um rowdy out there there's there's definitely like some whoops undulations and so you have to figure out well is it worth it for me to be out there through the whoops is that extra radius worth it or does it upset the car too much and i'm better off maybe being right right here okay this car here again probably isn't quite using the whole track for for this turn and that's going to end up costing them a little little time and that's something that you could work on again your perception in the car is different than on the outside so take advantage of your coaches that are going to be at the corners and stuff watching you to see well where am i uh going through turn nine am i am i using all the racetrack am i am i where i want to be So now we're we're heading down to the apex of nine and we're trying to carry all the speed we can and not have to lift off the throttle but i will say that this is one where um you know there there's enough of a rise to that curb that if you hit it too hard that can upset your car and we're getting to a spot where this is one area i've seen uh, drivers all by themselves destroy a perfectly good car around this race course. And so that, that ends up happening right here. So again, this car's a little wide at apex. 
our instructor car here is, is looking pretty good. Remember, as I when I get to apex from that point forward, I should be unwinding the unwinding the wheel. So we haven't hit the apex quite yet. All right, so then we want to unwind the wheel and bring it all the way out. Yep, my student car here changed. Um, so, you know, there's not a lot of walls here at Thunder Hill Raceway uh, Park, but there's a pit wall. And so this is a great opportunity for me just to share that, you know, if, if I'm really trying to carry a lot of speed, if I drop wheels off the racetrack into the dirt or into the grass here, you know, the, the natural tendency for, for most drivers is, that, is they want to yank that wheel and get back on. And, and I like to say, hey, don't be a jerk, right? Don't, don't jerk that wheel back on because if you have two tires over here in the grass, they don't have much grip. And then you have two tires on the pavement that do have grip. If you jerk that wheel back on, what's likely to happen is you're going to spin out this car and you're going to slam into that wall. And that's something that unfortunately I've seen happen multiple times where people get a little greedy trying to carry, carry every mile an hour they can out of the turn nine exit and they drop wheels and then overcorrect. And oftentimes it's not the, the first mistake that got you in trouble. It's the second or the third mistake that, that ends up, you know, causing that big wreck, right? It's not just that I dropped wheels. It was that how I responded to that was wrong. So we'd be better off if we did find ourselves dropping wheels to es essentially take our lumps, if you will, realize that, hey, I'm going to lose some, some spots, but I'm going to mow the grass and I'm going to kind of ride this out. And I'm going to, you know, get off the throttle a little bit and then slowly ease my car back onto the racetrack um, and, uh, you know, live to race another day, so to speak. So important turn to carry all the speed we can, but it's also a turn where there's a decent deal of, of caution that should be here so that um, you don't end up, you know, dropping wheels and, and make, making big mistakes. So with that, clear up those drawings. That has now taken us through a lap of our Thunder Hill School track. And boy, it's, it's a lot of fun. It really is. Now, when we start our weekend, we're pretty much going to keep you guys locked down until we, you know, get to learn you and you guys get acclimated. Like I said, a lot of our, since you might be driving a car, you've, you've never sat in the car before the weekend, right? Like if you rented a, a, a spec Miata from one of our car rental folks, you know, maybe you, maybe you don't drive a Miata every day, right? It's, it's going to, it's going to feel a lot different. And so what, what we tend to do is just have you pass on that front straightaway at the beginning and then throughout the weekend, we open up different passing zones. So when you get to school, what you're going to want to do is, you know, ask your, your coach. I'm sure they'll tell you, uh, your, your, your group leader, okay, where are we allowed to pass for this session? And then that will progress throughout the weekend. By the end of the weekend, on Sunday, when we're doing our races, it's going to be, you know, real races. And you're, you're passing all, all over the place. And so, um, you know, we, we want you guys to be on top of it. Um, but we're not going to just throw you out there and just, you know, send you to the wolves, so to speak, at the beginning. We'll keep this thing pretty controlled at the, at the beginning, with just controlled passing on the straight, and then we'll feed it through throughout the weekend. Um, and in the school, we'll, we'll cover passing in great, in great detail. The SCCA and, and some of our members have, have really worked really hard on, on giving us some much clearer rules. Uh, and passing that are in our GCR now, and it's and it's fantastic. So we'll be sharing that uh, with you guys this this weekend. Um, so I want to beat you up a little bit with some race flags, guys. And and this is this is a big deal, right? Like if if um, you can't respond to these race flags, this would be something that would cause you to not pass the school. Like we we absolutely have to have to make sure that you understand what the flags are and that you obey what, what the flags are telling you um, so that you can race with us safely on the course. Those are our communication with, with the track, right? It's not like they have not, it's not like they can speak into your helmet or anything. It's they're showing the flags to you and you have to in interpret those things. Um, so some of these flags 
are are pretty basic, right? Like, you know, green, yellow, red relate to our our traffic lights. But um, it's amazing how many times um, uh, folks will miss a, a yellow flag. Um, am I am I allowed to pass other drivers? You know, by a yellow flag. You guys, you guys tell me. Because I know a lot of you guys have been through your ground school already where you did the e-learning module on the flags. What do you guys think? We can even put it in the chat. I just got to turn turn my chat system on. Where is it? There it is. Um, all right. So if I see the yellow flag, should I be going through there at, at you know, full full speed? passing five cars on the outside or what, what do you guys think? No, under yellow, you should not be passing, but I assume it's only for that corner if it's a single yellow. Yeah. Single yellow. So once I, once I um, pass the, the obstruction, if you will, if I, if I pass the point of caution, then I can go then get back up to back up to speed, especially if I can see the next flag station, there's no flag waving there. I've seen the, the melee cars off on the dirt on the side or whatever. Now I can get back up to speed. So um, really, really good. So again, this weekend, um, and, and every group will, will go over this in one of the first sessions, is these flags. And you know, some of them maybe are a little different than what other race series or organizations may use. For instance, Let's look at the, I can circle it. Let's get the phone book. What about the white flag? That, may, that had probably had a little different meaning for, um, for us than uh, in the SCCA than what you might see on, uh, on TV and stuff, right? If I saw like a, a, a white flag at a corner, maybe accompanied by a, a yellow flag, what, what's that white flag mean? Especially when I see that out at uh, not just that start finish line, but I see it at corners and stuff as well. What's going on? What do you guys think? It's a little bit different one. I think that's emergency vehicle coming on track. So you want to make sure not to buzz them. Yes, exactly. Thank you so much. That's exactly it. Yeah. So there's emergency vehicles. They could be doing a hot tow out there, um, which you know, I it is fantastic because that gives you, you know, more green flag time, right? If, if they're having to do a full course caution or they got to do a red, you know, like you're, you're losing track time. And I don't know about you guys. I'm, I'm ever the economizer, man. I'm, I'm calculating how much, you know, per minute it costs me to, to be out on that racetrack. And I want, you know, as many green flag laps as I can. So they might have uh, some safety vehicles out there, maybe doing a hot tow. And so that's to let you know that, hey, don't, don't be flying by these, these safety vehicles at a zillion miles an hour. Get, give them the room that they need and, and lower your speed uh, accordingly so that they're safe. So um, really, really good, guys. So if you haven't had a chance to do that, that ground school, make sure you do that before the, before the school, that e-learning module. You know, I think that the SCCA work, did a pretty good job with that. Um, uh, also in our, in our rule book, the, the, the GCR, of course, they outline and define all these, all these flags. And again, the way SCCA is going to use these flags can be a little different than some of the other organizations. So I got, I got one more for you here. I just love this old photo here. Uh, you're, you're cruising up in that, uh, Can-Am looking car. That thing's pretty sweet. And you see that flag. What is that one? mean what do you guys think what's that one mean? debris on the track yeah debris on the track debris on the track yeah so maybe somebody dropped wheels they kicked a bunch of dirt on there um so it's it's kind of like okay here, here's your warning okay um and what's interesting about that <clears throat> is you might see that for a few laps and then they'll pull it put it away because now at this point, you're just supposed to remember that, oh, yeah, there's a bunch of dirt, you know, in turn four or whatever. So you really have to be, you know, heads up and 
over over the weekend, I'm sure your your instructors and coaches will talk about, um, you know, track awareness, right? That's kind of part of it. Is like, oh yeah, I saw the debris flag there. Uh, you know, there's going to be something on the surface, and then I got to put that in my you know active memory banks there to remember that you know there there might be something weird on a particular corner or a particular section of the track. Great job. All right. Um, so I know we're going a little longer than I wanted to go, but we're, we're almost at the end of this thing. So again, your first sessions, especially when you're doing um, your lead follows and street cars at slow speed, make sure you find all these corner stations. There's several around the racetrack. Find those things, know where they're at. Start to form a, a habit, a mental programming, if you will, to, to, to actively look at those things because it's going to feel weird. Like it's, it's very natural to be so focused on where you're driving and your driving line and stuff that you just, you don't even see those corner stations. And so you really have to actively work on that to open up your vision and find those corner stations. So let's put up that graphic to kind of show you where they're at on the map. And again, what I, what I would encourage you to do is to, um, uh, on your first sessions out there is, is to, you know, see those stations, really get them loaded in your memory banks. So you guys have already gone through a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, I'm sure it was a challenge for a lot of you folks getting that, uh, that uh, medical exam. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff that you hoops you got to go through to get your, your uh, competition permit. The nice thing about getting your SCCA competition permit is that a lot of other ra racing organizations will honor that permit. So you'll really be able to do uh, racing with, a, with a, a lot of clubs. Of course, we hope that you keep racing with us here. Um, so remember, that I talked about that GCR. That There it is, the general competition rules. That's, uh, that's what we want to reference. <clears throat> so um, don't forget... As you're heading out to school, and, I, and I'm sharing this lesson because guess what? I, when I was going to school, I forgot it somehow. I got everything loaded up. The car's all there. I get all the way to the, to the school, and guess what? I left, I left my gear at home. So you have all your driver's safety gear, right? Your driver's suit, depending on the level, you might have underwear to have in that suit. Of course, your helmet, um, and of course, it's got to have the right ratings. Uh, which this would not be the right rating, right? Not only is it old, that's a motorcycle helmet. We want an SA helmet. And um, you guys you guys tell me, because I'm slipping a little bit here. I assume that we're up to an SA 2015 or newer, but I want to say that for the beginning of this year, maybe you could still have a 2010, but I'm not sure about that. Who... Uh, who knows? Um, are we still? Are people still able to get through for this first event with the uh, 2010 Snell rated, or would they have to have a 2015 or newer? I wonder. Well, anyways, that's something to look at. Preferably, you'd want that that sticker in your helmet to say SA and 2015. So just don't forget all your gear, head and neck restraint. Right, gloves, socks, balaclava or head sock. Just my little reminder there on that. And of course, a couple things for you guys who are bringing your own cars, right? Um, when you get to school, if you're bringing your own car, you really wanna get there the, the day before and get that car tech. It's stressful enough at the beginning of school. So um, get that car over to the tech stewards um, so that they can look at it. It doesn't necessarily have to fit a race. Let's say you have a, you know, you, you have a, a, a Mustang or something and it doesn't quite fit the classes. Really what they're looking for is the, is the safety. Do, do the belts have the right dates on them? Are they installed correctly? Do we have our master disconnect? Do we have our toe points on the car? Are those cl clearly labeled, right? And all these things are safety related. Do we have a fire extinguisher or a fire bottle system on the car. And of course, before you go out to, on the racetrack, you know, you make sure you, you, you take the pin out so you're ready to use that thing uh, if God forbid you needed to use it, right? And of course, uh, you know, your vehicle at this point, you know, hopefully you've already 
if it's a new build, you, you, you've had it inspected before and you have that log book, um, sign up, you know, the, the tech stewards will get a little frustrated if we're, if we're doing brand new vehicles. It takes longer to get that initial log book done. So give yourself extra time if you don't have a, a book yet. Like I said, uh, we're gonna start off with lead and follow sessions in our street cars. We're gonna be driving at slower speeds in these sessions. And um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll likely use cell phones or um, walkie talkies. Um, I've asked some of the coaches I'm working with if, if they have a set of walkie talkies to, to bring them um, so that we can, so that we can talk to, um, or uh, talk to the students as, as we go around the track at slower speeds and pick up those reference points and stuff. And, and I would say um, when, you're, when you guys are, are you know, following your instructor, not only look at the placement of their car, but look at the angle of the car, right? Like we talked about you know, apexing in, in, in the location of the apex tonight, but it's not just about the apex, it's about the angle of your car at the apex is a big deal. So try to look at those things. Um, and, and what I've found from the lead and follows that I've done is that uh, sometimes I'll have a student behind me and they're just staring at my car. And then when I wave them around and the, the instructor will either tell you on your communication, whether that's cell phones or walkie talkies, or they might give you the, the spin around symbol. So that when I follow the student, I find that you know sometimes I, I switch spots with the student and they're completely lost because they were so focused on looking at my car, they really weren't picking up those references around. So I say, hey, remember when you're following that instructor car, you're looking at the car's placement and its angle and almost think of that instructor car as like a ghost car. Like you're almost seeing the car, but you're also seeing through it. So you pay attention to where it is on the racetrack, okay? And of course, like I've said like 50 times tonight, hopefully I'm not driving you nuts, but you wanna know where all those corner stations are. I have a question about uh, the street cars only. Is the street, does that mean like the car that I'm driving to the track, not my race car? And then if so, does that need to like have its own tech done to it? That's a great question. No, it, it does not need its own tech done because uh, we're doing this at slow speeds. And yes, it would be just this, the car that you drove to the racetrack. It could be your F-150 pickup truck or, you know, a, you know, a Suburban or whatever. Uh, I know my picture here, it's like Mustangs and stuff, but um, yeah, it's just whatever, whatever you came to the street in uh, or came to the school in, it could be your rental car or whatever. We're going out on the racetrack. We're traveling at a slower speed um, and we're just really using it to pick up those reference points. Right. And we're, we're doing that. So we, you know, we're not all huffing it around the track. Although I do think that, boy, if you could, you know, get there early or stay late or something and, and do an actual track walk. I think there's, there's value to that as well, but yes, it's, it's in your street car, what, whatever that is, it doesn't need to be a uh, safety tech or anything. Although, you know, I guess you'd, you'd want your car to be in good enough shape that it won't break down on the racetrack. <laughs> um, but we're just cruising around at slower speeds. You're going to follow your, your coach for a few laps. They're going to be talking to you and, and then there, you guys are going to do a switcheroo and then uh, they'll follow you for a few laps and talk to you a little bit. And then you'll, you guys will come into the, in the pits and paddock area and you'll, you'll talk about it and, and talk about references and what do you see out there and what did that feel? It'll still feel different when you're in the actual race car, right? Which could be considerably different than what, what, whatever your street car is. It'll feel different, but the whole idea is that um, it will do a better job than I was ever able to do tonight with the, with the pitchers to really start loading in that, that visual information and that, that physical information, kind of mental program yourself to this is the, the way this track is going to feel. And, and of course, I'm sure it will give you a chance to, um, you know, identify some things and, and ask questions. And that's, that's really what it's all about. And, this will be a little different for us. It's not normally what we would do. Um, in years previous, we would all jump in a, a sedan or a, a pickup truck or whatever. We'd usually get three or four students and, a, and a, an instructor in a car and we'd all go around together and talk about it. Um, but with COVID and stuff, 
this is a safer way for us to go. And uh, several of the other car clubs we work with have been able to use this method pretty effectively. So my big tip for you is to remember, don't just stare at that instructor car when you're following it. You know, pay attention to where it's at on the racetrack, also the angle that it's at through the turns and almost kind of look through it like a ghost car so you don't just get focused on his bumper that you're really still picking up those references. And, and I've had some students tell me that that, that was more effective than um, uh, traditional right seat coaching. So anyways, every, everybody learns different. This is how we're doing it this year. And of course, at the, the very first session, you know, at the school when you meet with your group leaders and coaches and stuff and get assigned your, your driver coach, uh, they'll, they'll be talking about this. I just wanted to kind of give you a little primer. Um, you know, I'm, I'm expecting you guys to have a, a fantastic and successful weekend and get your competition permits. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, you'll get to the point where it's like, you want to learn more stuff. Uh, these are some of the references I use to make tonight's uh, presentation. Um, you know, there's just a lot of, a lot of great information out there now, um, a lot of professional um, uh, good resources. So I encourage you guys to, to like after that, I always look, thought of like, if I can spend $20 on a book and it, it, it you know, it helps me get like one tenth of a second faster. Well, then that, that was $20 well spent because it takes a lot of money when you're pouring it into your race car to get a tenth of a second sometimes. So these are some of the resources we used and, you know, it's, we, we're starting our education here. Definitely as a driver, you're, you're continually uh, wanting to upgrade your skills and learn more and more. Um, you're going to want, just a reminder to watch the schedule this weekend, right? You probably want a couple schedules on hand uh, so that you, uh, you know, can keep on track. Um, this is a draft one. Our real schedule is not too different than this, but uh, be aware if we have, if you're in a group one, or a group two car and you happen to be sharing a car, like one guy or gal is driving that car in group one and then you're driving that same car in group two, like you guys gotta be quick on your changeovers, okay? We've tried to set up the schedule to give you as much time as we can, but no matter how you do it, it does get a little tight. So be aware of that if you're sharing cars. Um, again, these were all of our expectations right? We're, we're really wanting to see you guys do some clean, consistent driving and uh, be well behaved out there. Ask lots of questions. Of course, obey the flags. You're, you're going to have just a, um, a fantastic uh, weekend. Oh, a couple things on COVID stuff. I, I forgot about that. Um, uh, a, yeah, if everything goes according to plan, when you get to, oh no, my Bernie popped up too fast. When you get to uh, when you get to the school for your group, um, we have group one and three over in, in the new garages. We're gonna have group two over in garage 11. Uh, but when you get over there, there should be some chairs set up and there's gonna be some name tags. So you can pick your seat and put your name on it. And then that's your chair, okay? Um, so that's supposed to be all set up. Um, what I would say is if you have a folding chair <laughs> that you use for camping or something, you might want to grab it and bring it with you to the track just in case something goes awry and not all the folding chairs show up like, like we wanted them to. I think that would be a good backup plan. Um, one of our big, big rules this weekend is going to be, you know, if you're not inside your race car with your helmet and stuff on, uh, we want you masked up to keep you and all of our workers, friends and families uh, safe. Um, we're going to be doing our social distancing. We're also going to ask that in years previous, we would let, you know, people on the crew or family members that wanted to listen into the classroom sessions, come on in. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we're going to ask that those folks stay, uh, you know, back to with your pit area and stuff, and that only the students who are in that particular group attend those classroom sessions so that we can maintain that social uh, distancing. Okay, so... Yep, it's it's a little bit of a drag, but that's that's going to be our standards of due diligence to keep to keep you guys and everybody safe. And of course, there's uh, Bernie at driver's school last year. Oh, maybe not, but anyways. Um, so uh, uh, student profile sheets. I think you guys have already done these. I've seen a lot of the profiles. 
if you're somebody who's signed up kind of late, make sure you get that profile in so we can get you paired with the right uh, coach. And of course, don't forget about your ground school if you haven't already done that, okay? And uh, yeah, that's, that we, we did it guys. I'm sorry that went a little longer than, than I wanted to. Um, we, we talked about our five points to the every corner. We did our virtual track walk. We reviewed some of the flags. Again, look, you know, you can download the PDF of the GCR, go to SCCA downloads, or you could Google search SCCA GCR. Download that thing if you don't have a copy, go through it, make sure you're you're fully functional on those flags. And um, I, I also encourage uh, those of you guys that you got my email, um, you know, use some of those resources. There's that uh, Speed Secrets Illustrated read through that thing, um, all kinds of good information to get you guys ready for the school. And with that, I, I look forward to seeing you at the school. It's really gonna just be a great weekend. Any, any last questions before we wrap, we wrap this up? And again, I apologize for, for you know, running over the time. Anything else? And of course, um, you could you could type it in. There's a chat function on on Zoom that you could type it in there. Uh, that works uh, well as as well. But you know we're here we're here to here to help. Um, well, don't forget this weekend, right? If you have questions, ask them. Uh, you're you're all going to be assigned um, uh, coaches to to work with you, and then you'll have uh, instructors in your in your uh, various groups. And that's, that's what we're here to do. We're here to, to share our love of racing with you and to give you as much training as we can. And this is probably the only time in, in, in most of the, the coaches and instructors, it's the only time where they're going to be give, you know, sharing with you all their tricks and all their secrets, uh, especially sharing with you, the, you know, those, that information freely. Um, so if you have questions, make sure you ask them. Uh, we'll be happy to answer that stuff. So thank you so much for hanging out tonight. If you guys don't have any other questions, I'll, I'll let you get back on your real lives. And I look forward to, you, to seeing you this weekend, guys. All right. Thank you. Okay. Hey, thank you, everybody. It was it was great to spend right. the time with you. I saw some familiar faces and uh, I look forward to meeting the rest of you guys this, this weekend at the school. Okay. Take care, guys.